Hello everyone, Kenty Tiger here with Bengali Engineering and Play. We are back in Space Engineers, playing around just a little bit. Uh, I was messing around with solar panels in a couple of my other builds uh, and uh, wanted to kind of do uh, sort of a tutorial, not, not entirely tutorial, but uh, kind of one of those how do we deal with rotors. Uh, rotors, of course, is a big source of contention, uh, has really always been a big source of contention. Um, they work, but they don't work. Uh, they work, but they explode. Uh, all those kinds of things. So, uh, kind of uh, looks like they're fixed, but maybe not fixed. So, uh, anyway, uh, without getting into uh, all of those kinds of issues, uh, wanted to... Uh, wanted to do somewhat of a tor tutorial on uh, on kind of uh, theory uh, as to uh, how we can best utilize rotors when it comes to solar panels. Um, so obviously solar is a great form of, of energy. Now uh, if you see me rotating around here, the, what I'm intending on doing is uh, right now having the uh, the sun effectively against my back and here's why uh, I want to bring in uh, so the large solar array here as you can see in the tiny tiny image on your screen uh, is a three uh, three array array uh, so there's three different solar panel arrays here these are not really really huge arrays by any means uh, there are certainly much larger arrays out there um, so uh, if if this all goes well um, uh, okay this was approximately what I wanted to do um, the biggest thing is uh, how to get this to attach onto the world here without uh, causing too much trouble. So uh, the reason why I wanted it to attach um, is so I have a fixed point. Uh, so the best way to do that is to attach this into a um, an asteroid because asteroids are non-moving. So uh, what is this thing? So uh, obviously the base, you can see there's a conveyor here. Uh, the reason why there is a conveyor is, uh, well, here we go. Um, so this was uh, built, modified for really a very specific uh, instance, um, which is why there are numbered one, two, and three. Uh, which you didn't see that you only saw the first one there but in the array panel uh, where you see the array of arrays um, there are actually three arrays in the great big monster one and, and the reason for that is uh, more power is more power um, so the most power that we can get uh, out of these different solar arrays I think is about 150 uh, kilowatts per um, so let me, I, I just want to make sure uh, while we can use this for the example, no matter what we do, um, uh, let me turn these on. Uh, I may have, no, so this is solar panels. Um, so right now, as you can see, you know, these are facing uh, away from the sun. Uh, we're not away from the sun, but not at the sun directly. So I think we have one or two of the bars. Um, uh, there's nothing taking power so even though the max output uh, could be just about anything um, then uh, we're not using it for anything so uh, all right uh, so the reason I did that was really to just uh, see I, I wanted to make sure that this particular um, array was vanilla uh, it, it wouldn't really matter either way um, so inventory small cargo container yeah it does appear as though okay 
it, it does look like um, it is a, a generic container, uh, which is I which is what I wanted. Uh, I wanted to make sure this was uh, entirely vanilla. Um, all right, so let me back away from here. Uh, I did uh, UESC, I think is is what that is. They did a uh, uh, competition. I think it was quite a while back. It was basically the hostile environment competition and uh, different uh, creators, content creators um, made uh, bases. Uh, it was supposed to be, I believe, on the alien planet. Um, they were supposed to be within proximity of uh, certain minerals, certain raw materials. Um, and then the base was supposed to be a certain size. Now I was underway when this whole uh, competition went on, so I kind of found out about it by an email. Somebody said, hey, you ought to build a base for this. Um, but I didn't have any parameters, so the base I built actually would have been uh, disqualified immediately uh, because of uh, it was too big. Uh, it met a lot of the other requirements, but it was ultimately it was too big. Um, but obviously one of the requirements is to be vanilla, so I wanted to make sure these, these solar panels, uh, these solar arrays are vanilla. So um, a lot of, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So um, these look to be a bit uneven. So, uh, but if we look at where the rotors are, there's actually a reason that I built this this way. Uh, so 11 panels high uh, by, in fact, 11 panels wide. So there's five sets of panels on each side. So uh, if we did this, um, uh, 10 times 11 is 110. Uh, and there are four panels in the middle. Uh, so this is actually uh, 114 panels per array, which actually is quite a bit, uh, if you really think about it. So if we guide and direct this thing uh, up to the sun, which we do intend to do in this particular uh, kind of short tutorial. So the two goals here, uh, just to put them on the table ahead of time, uh, one is a manually steered, the other is to kind of uh, and this is where the tutorial part comes in, uh, is to kind of um, demonstrate uh, how the uh, mid-space uh, solar tracker, solar sun tracker, uh, actually functions. Um, so uh, that that's kind of the tutorial part so uh, we start out with the manual part here this is obviously a pre-built array so I'm not building one from scratch but I do want to go into some of the engineering uh, behind this thing um, this is a, a directable array uh, which is to say this is a two axes controllable array uh, there are a lot of different builds that you'll see out there on the workshop that uh, are either single axes uh, with a, a fixed um, so azimuth obviously controllable uh, whereas uh, the elevation is fixed uh, in this case we have control of both elevation and um, azimuth uh, azimuth which is the roundy roundy uh, and elevation which is uh, the twisty twisty if you will um, so uh, in this case, uh, you can see by the, uh, by the shadow back there that we are not aligned to the sun. Um, so, uh, so anyway, going backwards again, I'm changing script on you. Um, why are there Gatlin cannons on this? So this was, again, built as a part for a bigger base. Uh, and because... Uh, you can never have uh, so if for those of you who have been on the alien planet uh, there's spiders there uh, and whether they spawn at a quick rate or a slow rate eh. uh, so what this was was to add in uh, Gatling cannons up on the top of you know a pedestal and because I had the solar arrays out here anyway then it was logical to just add those in 
Uh, so uh, through the center of this pillar is uh, obviously conveyors coming up, conveyor uh, coming up. So uh, then you can connect this other conveyor uh, on. Uh, I think there's four way at the bottom. Uh, well, hard to see on that side, but uh, I think there's a four way connection. Well, possibly not. Uh, easy enough to accomplish if you wanted to do that, but um, so this array is not up on the uh, uh, the workshop, but I I may actually put it up there just for people to use because obviously it can incorporate easily into uh, your different uh, things. So uh, the color coding here uh, does this make any sense? So this one out here was actually what was intended to connect on to the base uh, this here was intended to connect uh, to the other arrays uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure obviously this is a very large array so spinning these things a full 360 uh, could cause problems because they might hit one another so the idea was to make sure that they were far enough away from one another that they could spin and not hit. So that's what this really was. Um, so if you look down here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So each one of the blacks is 10. So this is 10, 20, 30, and 40 away. Uh, so if we uh, have 40 in between, then we're actually going to have, uh, this is almost 20. Uh, which means uh, by the time we get the other one attached onto here, then we have a very small gap, but a gap nonetheless. So that was the idea here. So you could literally stack these two uh, to the to the next one. So that was that was kind of the idea. Um, so the perspective here was you would have full rotational ability on every array, even if you stacked four or five or ten of them, if you had the patience to do so. Um, so that was the idea is that these could be technically modular uh, type uh, apparatus so all right so how does this work why is it built this way uh, one of the things that you want to achieve uh, in the process of your building is um, it, it's kind of hard to see but you can actually turn on some things like center of mass um, and see how these rotors are functioning. So obviously uh, with an array this size, you actually do have a significant amount of weight. Is it considerable? No, not really, uh, but it is still significant. Um, so the idea is that you put enough stress on the rotors on either axis and you have uh, the potential of it blowing up, uh, which has always been an issue with rotors. Um, now, supposedly there have been some major improvements over that uh, I, in reading uh, from a lot of the other players, a lot of the forums, uh, I, there's still some mixed emotion as to whether uh, the rotors and pistons issues uh, have been fixed. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into any arguments either way on whether they have or not. Uh, I haven't played with them extensively. Um, rotors and pistons were always one of those clang things where in certain conditions they will blow up on you and trying to uh, scientific principle being what it is. Can we determine absolutely uh, and consistently a mechanism that will cause these things to blow up? And the answer is no. Uh, so is it purely random no there have to be some conditions but can we simulate those conditions uh, often enough to really understand uh, how and why they blow up and that's uh, in Keene's defense one of the reasons why they have been so problematic to fix is because you have to be able to determine what is causing these issues and can we simulate that consistently and the answer has been no so uh, in Keene's defense, obviously there's a lot of challenges to figure out uh, what causes these problems and we can't fix them until we understand the causes of those problems. So again, not going to get into an argument one way or the other whether these are fixed or not. Um, 
So for me, the, the rotors in this instance have, have worked fairly well. I have only blown up a few of these solar panels and it really wasn't uh, by way of clang. It was uh, just because I was being stupid. So why are these things designed the way they are? If you look at this, so let's just look at a downward angle. Uh, this thing is fairly centered. So if we look at the uh, the rotor where the reticle is pointing, um, you can see that there are five stacks of solar panels on both sides and that the rotor is effectively in the center of those. Obviously, it's slightly offset uh, because, because uh, a solar panel is four wide and this is like you know two and a half in one way and and uh, one and a half in the other way um, just because that's where things sit um, so uh, wasn't intentional but that's as close to the center as can be had uh, so that's what I did uh, likewise so the azimuth there you can see how it's uh, almost centered uh, so there's almost equal weight uh, from both sides. It's not enough weight to cause significant issues. It will do what it needs to do. Um, the other uh, axes, again, slightly off, but not very much. Um, obviously, because we have those four solar panels up top, uh, there is that additional weight that when we spin this thing to angles, uh, to elevations, uh, then we are obviously going to have slightly more weight on the top portion of this thing. Um, why is it designed that way? Well, I wanted to give uh, at least 180 degree rotation capability on the elevation, which means I can go from 90 degrees like it is now to absolutely flat or pointed the other way, which means we have effectively a 180 degree arc. Now, obviously we have more than that because we could put this thing upside down if we really wanted to. So until that uh, kind of U section flips all the way around and hits the bottom, uh, so really we have about 320 degrees of total rotational arc or total, uh, total elevation arc there. Uh, do we need to use that? No. Uh, obviously we can uh, uh, rotate one way uh, to get the sun if it's on the back side, rotate the other way if it's uh, on the front side. Uh, so again why did I build it this way to give the optimum balance uh, for the array this size so I'm not overly stressing these rotors so I'm keeping the balance of weight approximately in the center at least as much in the center as we can possibly achieve uh, given the limitations of the game obviously if I were engineering this in real world uh, then uh, this center point would uh, I would have a, a slightly longer shaft here uh, which would enable me to have the center of axes perfectly aligned in the middle uh, obviously we can't do that here uh, the same thing with this one uh, I am on the lower half of the two wide uh, whereas if I could mount this in real life then I would mount it exactly in the center uh, which would keep this rotational thing uh, perfectly aligned. Uh, what could we do in real life would be to put counterweights out here which would effectively uh, counterbalance this and this thing here uh, because obviously we have uh, slight offsets there. So uh, we would have a calculated weight for this portion of the array. We would have counterbalance down here that we could actually mount on the outside of this array. And technically, we could do some of that, um, but uh, obviously, proportionally, uh, and this is getting into you know those calculus equations and and sine and cosine equations, so trigonomic equations to determine how much weight actually there is uh, out here. So, you know, could we calculate all that? Yeah, we probably could. Uh, would it be a better balance? Yeah, probably so, uh, but. If it works, it works. Don't don't uh, over engineer too much. Okay. So as I was up here closer, uh, probably a lot of you noticed uh, there was a a cockpit up here. Why is there a cockpit up here? Um, the simple answer is 
I wanted to make this easy enough to align uh, that it wouldn't be problematic, that you wouldn't have to configure anything. All you would have to do is easily jump in somewhere and poof, you would be there you go. So let me demonstrate that. Why did I put the cockpit here? Because I wanted to give a simple way to align that. So T to enter the cockpit. And one of the things you see is uh, we have in slot one and two, um, we have uh, some type of rotor control, uh, which is on off and uh, in fact reverse. Uh, so you can go either way. Um, and in eight and nine is the same thing. Now, what does this really mean? Let me go ahead and punch up G here so you can see what this is going. Um, so uh, if you can read the text, solar array number one azimuth. Okay, so this is my rotation around the center. So my azimuth control, roundy, roundy. Uh, this one here is solar array number one elevation. Okay, so this is the other one. Um, so my ability to control these uh, is really uh, set up on the toolbar here, which is exactly why I wanted that. Now the other reason to have a, uh, uh, a cockpit here is it puts a reticle on your screen. Um, so I can align perfectly uh, with my reticle, which is exactly what I wanted. So let me jump out of the cockpit here. Uh, and the, just for a moment, and the reason I do that is, is I want to figure out where the sun actually is. So if I spin around this way, give myself an approximate, you know, back view of where it is. All right. So I'm going to swing up to about a 30 something degree angle on my elevation. And I'm going to come back around to that. So when I put my, so as you can see here, I know that's really bright on your screen. But uh, if I put my reticle right there in the dead center of the sun, then my solar array is perfectly aligned with the sun. Why is that? Because the cockpit is perfectly aligned with the array. So if I put the reticle of the cockpit onto the sun, then I know that I am where I need to be. So how do I do that? T back in here. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is figure out uh, on or off, so you can see that this is uh, slowly, it's, it's oscillating slightly. Uh, and that's because the array is heavy. Uh, it is a significant weight. There's the sun. So the idea is um, to rotate this upward in elevation until I am dare I say parallel, aligned with, whatever phrasing you want to use, with the sun. And I can reverse this if I need to. Uh, I recommend uh, going to off on your uh, rotation before you reverse. Just reversing puts a lot of strain onto uh, your rotors. I have a corona there so I can use that kind of to align myself. All right, and stopped. Um, now we'll, we'll jump into, uh, again, more of the engineering side of this uh, just to kind of show you like the torque and braking. Uh, I set both of those, if I recall correctly, to maximum. Uh, the reason for that is you don't want any slippage. Uh, you notice that when I punched uh, the button there, we halted. Um, so do, do you want to slowly break to a stop? You could. Uh, it would actually take a little bit of stress. Uh, obviously, when you're talking about force, um, we are moving a very large array. So just to slam on the brakes when we... Uh, want to stop is obviously some stress. Uh, we have to arrest the mechanical motion there. So there is a, uh, a spike in force. Uh, whether the physics actually does anything with that or not is left to be seen. Uh, so that's, you know, one of those things that we, we max out the stress on a rotor and it blows up. So whatever that threshold of stress happens to be, hmm. 
All right, so uh, pushing number one here, which is the uh, the azimuth rotation. Okay, and I'm actually going the wrong way, so I'm going to reverse uh, and then correct to the other way. And one of the things you see is as, as I'm rotating, I'm not on a perfect uh, axis. So uh, we're obviously moving in somewhat of a slant. Uh, so I'm going to punch number nine, which is reversing uh, my uh, elevation one. I'm almost aligned with the sun here. So we're going to stop the number one for just a moment. We're going to do a number eight, which will bring the array downwards. And we're going to stop that. We're going to start rotating on number one again and get it more perfectly aligned. All right. And then a nine again to go up just slightly and not perfect, but as I said, close enough for government work. So using the cockpit here as a uh, basically a site was, was the whole concept here and putting the two rotors onto the screen so you could uh, work with them. Uh, made it really, really easy or onto the toolbar rather. So let me tee and get out of here. Um, of course, it's uh, moving just a little bit, which is kind of strange, which is just the stress over there. Obviously, again, this is a significant weight. Hopefully, that will eventually stop moving. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I want you to see is that all of these that we can actually see are now fours all of the solar panels are pointed at four so we are as perfectly aligned with the sun as we can be even though um, the asteroid down yonder uh, is not entirely aligned with the sun all right so uh, okay back into this uh, just so we can see what some of these so uh max output 120 kilowatts which is indeed the max uh, available wattage from our solar panels. So every single one of these is capable now of putting out the 120 uh, kilowatts each. So if we uh, if we do the math there, 120 kilowatts times 114 panels, is it? Um, 110, 114, yep. Uh, would give us, I think, like 1.5 megawatts or something. So give me half a second. I'm going to go grab my calculator because I'm curious. So give me half a second. Okay, I was slightly off, so uh, if we're doing by straight numbers, that would be uh, 1.368 megawatts per array, which actually isn't too bad. Um, now, the problem with solar, of course, is that solar is not the most efficient source of energy. Uh, and what I mean by that is your size versus bang for the buck. If we uh, consider that one small reactor, the tiny little one block by, you know, one by one by one block, large, uh, small reactor. There you go. How's that for a large, small reactor? Uh, a, a large block, small reactor, if I were to say that more appropriately, um, is 15 megawatts. Okay. So 15 megawatts. And yet this monster sized array here is putting out just a little bit under 1.4 megawatts. So one block, which is 15 times almost uh, closer to 12, of course, uh, than, uh, than this entire array. However, uh, short of the power that you need to rotate this thing around, um, 
you are entirely powered by effectively green energy here. So uh, other than maintenance and that sort of thing on this thing, you don't have to worry about it ever. You don't have to put uranium in it. You don't have to do anything to it. You just have to point it to the sun and walk away. Now, one of the problems with a manually pointed array uh, is uh, obviously uh, if the sun now remember one of the things with space engineers that's kind of a little weird is that uh, the rotation the day and night because planets asteroids and such forth are fixed objects in space how did we get the day and night uh, and they did that I, I again not arguing the pros or cons there but they decided that the Sun rotates around the universe here okay so um, to simulate things spinning uh, we actually spin the Sun so the Sun rotates around the universe uh, and you can turn that off as I have done here this world is a fixed Sun there is no Sun rotation so I've turned the Sun rotation off uh, the reason for that is is I find sun rotation to be just so anti real uh, just so just just I have a hard time with that one so that's you know my OCD sh shining through on you um, so um, manual pointing I point it once and walk away uh, but in the case of the Sun actually moving then having the ability to track the sun movement uh, becomes a an important thing now uh, one of the things that I might have actually forgotten to do which I think I did is put on yeah I don't think I actually put the sun tracker on here no I didn't okay so so uh, I guess this one's gonna end up being a little bit of a short uh, not so much a tutorial as I had planned but just kind of a concept uh, solar array concept here uh, concept demonstration uh, more than anything else uh, so with that I'm going to go ahead and reload or I guess I really kinda could reload here uh, and uh, and bring in the solar array even though it does take a little bit of time to do that so uh, if you all uh, we'll be patient here. I will do a reload, bring in that solar tracker, and then we will play with the solar tracker uh, and make this thing work. So I'm uh, going to do a quick save here and then uh, uh, exit to main menu. Uh, do I need to save twice? No, probably not. And this is the, uh, the most updated version, which is 1.185.6. Uh, and again, I have not played extensively with testing uh, rotors and pistons to see, but all right. So uh, load game. Uh, this is my standard mods environment here, which we're going to do in edit settings and mods. Uh, it should be down. Oh, mid space experimental solar tracker. Okay, so we're going to bring that in. That happens to be right at the very bottom of my list now, which I'm just going to leave right there. Uh, I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail, but these are my standard mods. Uh, Kenti Blocks, which I have everything. Uh, Deep Thoughts. Um, so Onko Jaguar uh, combined mod. Um, Darth Biomex combined mod. Uh, all here. Uh, Text HUD API uh, adds an ability for a lot of modders to use a singular uh, text HUD application so application programming interface here to put information onto your screen um, there is probably four or five mods that I know of that actually use that now so uh, definitely a convenient thing midspace admin helper commands uh, again don't want to go into too much detail on what of these are because I've, I've done that before uh, and I tend to really get going so automatic or pickup that's for your player when you're drilling uh, to pick up rather than have it go everywhere. Easy inventory, uh, you got to look at this one. This will save you all kinds of time. Uh, you can't use this when you are in creative uh, or when you're in Space Master mode. Uh, you'll blow up your uh, uh, your uh, containers. So be careful. But, but when you're in true survival mode, uh, which at the moment I am not running, uh, I'm actually in Space Master survival mode, 
Um, so, uh, conveyor expansion. Um, the conveyors, uh, just having those three things for conveyors, yes, you can do everything you need to do, but is it the most efficient? No. Uh, docking cameras. Docking cameras are docking cameras. Uh, airlock block, a single block, uh, two-door airlock, kind of neat stuff. Cargo teleporter, I love this for when you're mining or moving stuff around from base to base, that sort of thing. Uh, it is radio antenna base, not laser antenna base, so you are limited to the 50,000 range. Uh, this is a Paycast uh, mod, uh, no longer supported, but uh, he actually does keep this, he, she, uh, does keep this fixed. Uh, so there was a, a, it was broken not too long back and, and was fixed. Uh, conveyor air vent uh, from Digi. Um, it takes a conveyor, puts an air vent on one side, so you can actually recess this into your walls and that sort of thing. Uh, Nanite Control Factory, I've used this a lot. Uh, I really like it. Uh, it's gone through several iterations, uh, several broken uh, aspects, and then fixed again, broken again, fixed again. Uh, so right now, this is the current one. Uh, nanite, uh, nanobot build and repair system, really, really cool. Uh, you'll see this on either Wasted Space, um, streams, uh, they use this a lot, and also the uh, Captain Shack streams, so XP Gamers. You'll see them uh, using this. This one, uh, it's really nice. It has a lot of features and capabilities, but it is somewhat overpowered. Uh, it, it can do a lot of things. Um, so this uh, actually has some features that this one does not. Uh, this one is still evolving, but uh, this one actually uh, has some neat features like uh, dismantling of enemy ships. Uh, so that one's really cool. This one does not inherently do that. Uh, you have to own it to be able to dismantle it. Uh, so anyway, one of the things. Uh, energy weapons. Uh, so lasers and, uh, and plasma. Uh, just introduces two blocks, that's it. Uh, but they are really neat. Uh, energy shields. Energy shields. What can I say about those? Uh, energy shields are energy shields. Cool stuff. Um, ESO upgrade module. So this module is a single block module, dual sided, uh, so you can actually use uh, one of them for two. So you could put your, uh, for example, uh, refineries back to back, put eight of these modules in, and only eight because they're dual sided, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, this also works with the shields, so you get a bit of a shield boost. Uh, OCD compact tanks. Uh, love this. Uh, tanks. What more do I need to say? Uh, armored conveyors. Good stuff. Twin welders and twin grinders from Twin Industries. Uh, good stuff. They, uh, they increase the welding and grinding radius by quite a bit. Uh, they are very, very nice uh, welders. These also have gone through a couple iterations of being broken and fixed and broken and fixed. Scaffold. I've talked about this uh, in a lot of things it's basically a uh, it took the first iteration model of the light armor block and made it a finished block okay so that way you can use it in builds where you have either the nanobot build or nanite control factory uh, in operation because it is a built block uh, if you have unfinished blocks and you have either one of these guys working, well, it will finish it for you, which means you lose that, that aesthetic. Unfinished blocks. I have not played with this one yet, but it takes uh, this idea and takes it to the nth degree. So you have a lot of other blocks which are unfinished but finished. So it takes the unfinished models uh, and actually says they're done so you can use those for the aesthetic value and then of course we just brought this one in all right so babble babble uh that is all of those so we do the okay uh actually let's go ahead and review just for fun um so one of the things i like to do is keep inventory size about normal um there's a lot of strange things happen when you go to 10 um where is where do you draw the line of saying enough is enough? Uh, so I kind of like the three that it's not too much, but yet it's enough that you can actually do a lot of stuff. Um, when I'm playing kind of in the creative survival mode, 
which is to say I've got Space Master turned on or I'm doing a lot of building or dismantling or that sort of thing or playing around, I really like to have uh, assembler and refinery speed up. Um, it, it just makes things happen a lot faster. Um, uh, obviously, if you're doing a pure survival, um, you know, without uh, without really, uh, you know, you're just in it for the pure survivability, then you probably want to adjust both of these down and, and have it be a little more realistic. Welding speed and grinding speed. Um, again, personal preference there. Um, you know, you can go to half. Uh, realistic, which is effectively one, two, or five. Um, it, it really depends, uh, again, your perspective on how you treat survival. Is survival about surviving, or is survival about waiting for shit to happen? Um, to me, whether I take five minutes to grind something down or weld something up, or two minutes, uh, really does not change any survivability aspect of the game. It's a time issue so I turn this all the way up because I don't want to just waste time for the sake of wasting time I'm in it to play the game so why waste time on stupid shit hostility uh, again your personal preference do you want a bazillion meteors to be falling from the sky meteors are a bit unpredictable um, they like to go through asteroids which is kind of strange because meteors are meteors um, the ground creates th so anyway um, because I'm kind of again in, in a semi creative type of an environment I leave those on safe for now sound mode uh, I <sighs> realistic and arcade sounds uh, personal preference so go where you want to go with that one uh, limited the world size unlimited so basically you have uh, a huge space in which to play uh, view distance uh, again, your personal preference, how far away do you want to be able to view something realistically? Uh, respawn ship cooldown, understanding what this all means in the, uh, in the thing uh, is really kind of... Um, don't know what all that means. So, uh, relative to what is this seconds, what, what is this? Uh, day duration. This only matters when your sun rotation is turned on. Maximum objects. Uh, this can be a big uh, performance hit if you have a bazillion objects floating around. Why do I have it at 256? If you're mining and that sort of thing, the more objects you have in the world obviously will cause a performance hit, but uh, will also mean that you will be able to pick those things up. Uh, whereas if you had this set at 10 or 64 or whatever, uh, then you might not be able to get those objects picked up uh, fast enough before they disappear uh, because you'll only have that number of, of things. Maximum backup saves, five. Uh, and then all the different checkbox things. Uh, so auto healing is turned on. That will heal you up to 70%. After that, you would absolutely need to find medical attention somewhere. Uh, enable spectator mode. Uh, spectator mode uh, using that uh, the F8 uh, function 8, function 6, function 7, uh, those kinds of things are, uh, are are pretty important if you're doing a lot of manipulating in the world. Um, show player names. Uh, I'm in a single mode, uh, single player environment, so that doesn't really matter for me. Thruster damage, um, it, there's pros and cons. Uh, it depends on what you're doing. Weapons enabled, yeah, why not? Uh, destructible blocks, yeah, why not? Same, uh, same with thruster damage, so, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, uh, then you want to do that or not. Enable tool shake. I always thought that was really silly. Uh, for those of you who have ever been on a very large jackhammer, you realize that you will get shook around a little bit, uh, shaking around. Um, but uh, for these smaller things, uh, not so much. So why do we need tool shake? Uh, so anyway, uh, third person view. Yes, absolutely. Enable air tightness. Uh, and of course, the alternate there is that enable oxygen. Not sure why or how those are separate, but hey. Uh, convert to station. It gives you the option of uh, there on your screen while you're in the game. Enable jetpack. Yep, obviously I'm in space. That would really suck to not have a jetpack in space. Pretty much uh, no play. Uh, spawn with tools. So if I die, I've got uh, my, my tools, new tools will, will come back with me. Um, 
somewhere was enable sun rotation where was that there we go enable sun rotation on this side so uh, because I've got that unchecked my sun is now at a fixed place unsupported stations uh, whenever you connect onto a station your ship would become a station uh, because it's unsupported, it will not dynamically change back into uh, a ship. It will remain a station. You would have to go in and actually convert that to a ship again before it would move. Uh, not a uh, connectors that wasn't so much of a problem, but with merge blocks, if you used merge blocks to uh, to dock, then uh, problems. Uh, spawn with tools cover that uh, enable voxel destruction so obviously if you want to do any mining then uh, destroying those voxels as everything happens uh, I've got wolves drones and spiders turned off why because I'm in a uh, creative environment mostly remote block removal absolutely I want to do that if you get into space master the the menu on space master you can actually get rid of blocks that you don't need whether they be debris or other things uh, enable friendly turret damage. I haven't seen this one. Enables turret damage being applied to its own grid. Um, I suppose there's, uh, I'm not sure why you would want the computer to ignore the fact that, oh my god, I'm shooting myself. Uh, subgrid damage. Uh, so this was another thing. Enable damage between connected grids. Uh, unknown signals were the uh, the spawn things that just end up out there that you go and collect um, uh, basically suit pieces uh, and while that's all fine and dandy uh, they're pretty damn annoying because they put crap in the world uh, and eventually they become a poor performance hit enable respawn ships uh, respawn ships really only absolutely come into play um, when you have no usable medical bays uh, in which to spawn. Uh, so it will spawn a respawn ship uh, and let you spawn. So, alright, okay. Uh, okay again, make sure my standard base is selected and loading. So there it is. This will take just a few minutes and while it's doing that, I'm going to take a very short break. I will be right back. So here we are back in uh, in the world. Sorry, I had to get get a few snacks. I'm starving to death. So uh, I'm going to go to uh, my number eight toolbar, which is kind of my generic toolbar. Um, sun sensor. Guess that makes that pretty obvious, huh? Um, I'm not sure 
if there is a particular rotation, apparently so. So I'm gonna put that uh, on there to make it look kind of, uh, kind of like it should be there. Um, one of the other things I'm gonna do uh, is change <coughs> the names of these things. Um, because in this case we're just doing a demonstration I'm gonna change this to uh, azimuth uh, or maybe I should say rotor azimuth How about rotor uh, well, I'm gonna make this easy on myself All right. Um, so uh, I I talked about uh, coming back in here and and mentioning the the various settings. So why do I have this set so slow? Well, because this thing is really big. Um, now one of the problems I've seen in the past with the uh, let me go ahead and turn those off just to get them out of the way. Um, the array is large, so it's heavy. Uh, so what you wanted to make sure is you don't go from zero to full speed, uh, whatever full speed happens to be, very, very quickly. Okay, That, that just puts uh, an inordinate amount of force uh, on to things which means you'll you'll break things um, one of the problems that I've had in the past uh, is um, so uh, change this to me uh, yes um, one of the problems that I've had in the past is um, this thing moving the arrays too fast and they break um, so uh, so one of the things I want to do is uh, let me bring up my uh, the page with this particular thing on it and put it on the screen so you can actually see what it looks like. Uh, nanobot. Uh oh, I lost it. What happened? Bring it up. There we go. Sorry, working off screen here to bring in. Uh, let me uh, make this a little bigger. Okay, so uh, mid spaces. Let me go ahead and put it up that big. That way, you guys can read it on this uh, UHD screen. So, uh, experimental solar tracker. So this is an experimental cube and script used for tracking. You don't have to do anything with the script. It, it is embedded. Uh, so the idea, so to change the custom name of the sun sensor to include, tick, tick, tick. so basic instructions, right? Uh, azimuth and elevation. So in this case, we're adding both of the rotors, which is this AT rotor blah and rotor blah. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna copy paste that information just so I have it. Okay, so this is how this thing works. So fairly easily configurable. Uh, obviously there's quite a few people who are using it. Uh, so. Having said that, let me put this back off the screen so we can see Space Engineers again. Uh, and we're going to copy that information in here. Obviously, we do not have a rotor 12, rotor 13. So this is A-Z-I-M-U-T-H, azimuth and elevation. Now, this is either going to immediately work or immediately break. I have no idea which one. Uh, so, uh, not 
sure what the detect is either. All right. Uh, so, having done that, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure if anything happened. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. Of course, I'm already uh, pretty much aligned here. So what we're going to do here, uh, just for fun, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this guy. Now, I think this is configured. Uh, so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to reverse uh, 8 should be. Uh, so 9, reverse, we're going to go. Hmm. I think it adjust. Uh, I think it adjusted this even down farther than uh, than I thought. So uh, it is moving extremely slowly. So let me go in. So right now we're changing the elevation. Let's go and look and see what it did. So it actually moved this down to 0 0.03. So it might have actually calculated out. Um, Uh, based on the weight. So uh, I'm going to do a uh, point 0.1 which is going to increase this thing a little bit. Uh, we'll see what uh, this one did. This one changed the velocity to nothing. So theoretically we get to 360 or 359 and trip over to zero, however, uh, however we want. So obviously this is going to move really, really slowly. Three fifty seven, three fifty eight, three fifty nine, and then to zero. Which says 360 but anyway all right azimuth uh, so let's see which direction we are actually going the other way so I want to go ahead and reverse and then on once again I have 30 degrees here that I am going to change before I go back to off. Alright, so we're effectively at zero and zero. So three, six, zero, and zero are the same. For those of you who are familiar with compass. Alright, so uh, what I'm uh, actually going to do here is uh, turn this guy on, see what happens. Oh! So 
definitely aligned that abruptly. So uh, it it did really good on the on the single axis motion there. The question is, why didn't it align uh, on the azimuth? Uh, not sure why, unless I screwed things up and put these in backwards, which is entirely possible. Uh, so let me go back into K. Uh, no, it, it is azimuth and elevation, so I'm using both of the uh, axes, uh, I believe, accurately. So I'm just reading here to see. So one of the things it, it does say, uh, if you're using two, ro uh, two rotors, be careful of how the rotors will flip the solar panel about, okay, which is good and bad, uh, obviously. Um, you don't really, especially very large arrays, which is why this thing is experimental. Um, uh, rotor settings including torque, braking torque, and turn velocity will be reset by the sun sensor for its own purposes. Uh, turn limits and displacement will not be touched. So in this case, uh, all the turn uh, elements are uh, not changing. So their set is unlimited here, so you have full control over everything. So. Uh, this is just a guess. Obviously, it adjusted the uh, elevation. So, because it adjusted the elevation, it is in control of that second stage rotor. Uh, so, let me jump out of here. And here's my theory that once these went to a four, we really did not need to align any further than that. So, even though we're slightly off. Uh, it did not align both axes perfectly. Now there are a lot of scripts that are out there, the solar tracking scripts, um, which um, I've seen some of them work very well and I've seen others that uh, don't work so well and actually cause a lot of lag in the game. Now how they do that I don't know. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the programming on how they actually uh, reference different in-world aspects. Uh, so, uh, for for what it's worth. So this one works pretty good, other than uh, you can see it doesn't mess around when it goes to aligning. Uh, so apparently it is not taking into account the sheer weight that this thing is moving, uh, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, obviously the weight uh, plays a big role in uh, whether you blow up your rotors or not. But anyway, this is uh, kind of uh, the demonstration that I wanted to do. So manual versus automatic. Uh, again, there's a bazillion different ways of, of steering your solar panels, your solar arrays. Uh, this is but one, or actually two, of many. So, uh, happy engineering, and this is Kinty Tiger signing off. We'll see you next time.